Anyways, it's a little bit after eight o'clock. Let's go ahead and have a prayer. And then um, uh, we'll go ahead and um, just have a little devotional this morning. And um, we'll have a great time together. So, you know, like I sent in my note, uh, one of the really, really important things for us to understand through this trial. And what are we doing here this morning? This morning, it's as if we're having like a quiet time together and somebody's sharing a thought and we can then all uh, be encouraged and have a thought in our mind. One of the songs that we sang and sometimes we sing is, you know, um, let's, keep our, uh, let's keep our hearts and our minds on Jesus. When we wake up, when we wake up in the morning, where was your mind centered on Jesus? And so that's the whole idea this morning is for us to go about our day. So it says in Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 1, you can turn or you can listen, either one. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And so that's the thought this morning is that there are, the writer in the book of Hebrews brings about this thought that there are things that can hinder us. There are things that can entangle us in our lives. Another euphemism for that, there are distractions that can come about in our life. Be that distraction of sin, be that distraction of other things. One of the things at this point in time in our life that is incredibly, incredibly, uh, a high degree of possibility happening is, is distraction and the fact that we can be pulled away. And what, what distraction am I talking about right now? That distraction of worry, anxiety. Now, when I say distraction, I'm not saying that it's, not an, in, that it's an invalid feeling or it's an invalid emotion. What I'm talking about is that which is so real and prevalent dominates us. That's what I'm talking about here. It's not, it's so, so uh, I don't want us to imagine this idea of, man, I'm fearful or am I, I'm anxious or um, there are some worry that I have in my mind. Who wouldn't have some anxiety and fear and worry? Uh, you know, especially some of us maybe got the news this week that I don't know how safe our job is. Or maybe some of us has maybe already lost our jobs. And, and, and we're worrying and we've heard about the government stepping in, but we're worried. When is this going to take place? Is it going to take place? Uh, my rent, my taking care of my kids. I mean, there's just a plethora of things uh, that could happen at this point in time. And so the distraction or the thing that hinders is not the idea that we really need to make sure that I don't have any of these feelings, but rather how do we navigate this? Um, in Mark chapter 13, we see here the perfect example, the personification, if you would, of, not uh, Mark, Matthew chapter 13. Uh, the, the, the personification of, of this idea of um, did I say Matthew chapter 13? Uh, where is it? I'll find it in a second. I thought I had it written down there. One second. Um, back to my notes. It is It, it. Sorry about that. One second. Uh. What's the actual verse? Maybe one of us. Uh, I'm looking for what Jesus spent the 5,000. Uh, not in John, but in Matthew. When he walked on water. Uh, I had Matthew 13. Am I turning? Uh, 
Oh, I was looking at Mark, I believe. Matthew 13, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Matthew 13. Matthew 14. There we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Awesome. Sorry about that. Um, that happens from time to time. Okay. So it talks about the fact that in Matthew chap chapter 14 and verse 22, it says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him on the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went, on, he, he went up to a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But immediately, the disciples, or rather, immediately uh, Jesus said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why? Did you doubt? Hebrews 12 talked about the fact that we ought to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Right here is the personification of the need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus through this time. And so what happens? Guys, they had just fed 5,000 people with one little boy's meal some fish, and some loaves. And so this is not like they were struggling in their faith. It's not like they didn't see an incredible, incredible miracle. As a matter of fact, they talked about this miracle. They talked about the fact we need some food for these people. So where are we going to get all this food? And so there was thought being put into this. This was not just, oh, wow, something happened, and it just happened. And then Jesus said, you head on over to the other side. And, and it's interesting that Matthew wanted to point out that Jesus prayed even after such an incredible experience. And so he goes on and he tells the guys, hey, get up, go on the other side. It's interesting. There are a couple of times that some winds and waves came up. We, we talked about that, you know, a little while ago um, on a Sunday message that, uh, when Jesus was, when Jesus calmed the winds and the waves, he was sleeping in the boat, and this time he was outside the boat. And so on two different occasions, uh, apparently there were a lot of wind and, and squalls uh, in, in the water there. But the idea here is, in this sense, that an incredible experience happened. And it's this. Peter walked in water. Interestingly, unlike most of Jesus' miracles, this miracle was not elaborated on. The other miracle of the 5,000 being fed was elaborated on. And Jesus said, hey, I am going to not just fill your belly, but I'm going to fill you up totally. I am, he used this example in the book of John to say, I am the bread of life. That don't just come to me because I can fill your belly. I'm going to give you food that you are never going to grow and go hungry again. But Peter had an experience here when he was walking on the water. And then suddenly some winds and waves came in. What a beautiful illustration of the need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. When he started getting distracted and looking at the winds and waves, he started to sink. And I am telling you, 
in this time and age, in the atmosphere, not only in our city, not only in our country, but in the world, that we may fall prey and sink. Now, here is an incredible thing. This is one of the greatest acts of grace illustrated in the scriptures, and I'll tell you why. The Bible says that Peter, when he started to get distracted by the winds and waves, what did he do? He started to sink. Peter, the rock, as he was called by, by Jesus, the rock began to sink. Now, how did the rock begin to sink? Not immediately. Have you ever thrown a rock in a lake or some water? It sinks immediately. But he began to sink. He started following and falling down and sinking in the water slowly, not immediately, to the point where he did what? He cried out, Lord, save me. And oftentimes we're, when we're distracted and we look at things and we're challenged, and even when we start to sink, that's not the end of the matter. It allows us a moment of grace when we realize we cry out to Jesus. And he's, what did he say? Lord, save me. Lord, if it's you. He cried out. Moments like this, it's an opportunity afforded to us that realizes our need for the Almighty. Mm. Realizes that control is an illusion. It's phenomenal in a world that our technology is so incredible. That our world is panicking over hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, toilet paper, masks. You think about that. Had you ever, unless you were in that industry, thought about those things? And yet, this thing that we can't see, we can't even see, has crippled the world. What about those people now who say, well, I don't believe it because I don't see it. It doesn't matter if you believe it. Is that not a resounding message? It doesn't matter if you believe this, this virus exists. It's crippling the world. Look at the financial situation in the world. It's got to be built. So I said it to say, I think it's incredibly important that feelings of a lack of faith. Here's Peter, who was the one that was given the keys, that he had some problems with his faith. He began to sink. Feelings, times of discouragement through this time is not a problem. It doesn't It's not a signal that we are not spiritually fit. But it's a signal to us that says, God is calling us. He's weaning us. You know, I look at what's going on in the world. So many of us at this point in time are realizing, man, at least for me, it's the, the most challenging thing about this is being cooped up in my home. I love to be with people. I love to study the Bible with people. I love to spend time with people. I love to be about. This is punishment for me. And, but there's a lot of people are realizing, I don't, there's no sports in television. I love sports. You know anything about me. I love sports. Maybe after this, we're, we're having a spring cleaning and we're realizing what is really important in our lives? What is really necessary? And have I added a lot of hindering, a lot of things that has burdened me? And is this a spring cleaning for the world? I don't know. It could be. And we're realizing and it's semantic. I don't know how long it's going to stay. I remember going through H1N1. I remember going through MERS. I remember going through SARS. I remember going through 9-11. Um, there are moments of clarity at those, uh, in those times. I hope this one stays even longer about this spring cleaning. If anything, anything like me, I've moved a few times. Every single time I've 
what we've decluttered. But you know what continues to happen when we go to the new house or the new place? We gather stuff. We gather stuff in the basement. We gather stuff in our rooms. We gather stuff in our closets. And, and, you know, and we get convicted. We say, man, how come I'm, I start gathering things again? And so there, there, there are times in our lives when we have to detox, when we have to declutter, when we have to really, really. I hope this is that time for you. It was a, the time for, G, it, for Peter. Perhaps it was an indelible mark left in his mind when he realized, Lord, save me. A lot of people looked at he began to sink. He walked on water. Are these the moments that Jesus saw in Peter and he says, I'm going to give you the keys because you learned this lesson? And so this morning, as we head about our day, as we navigate through this time, this idea to keep our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith is personified here in Peter and his experience of walking on the water and even though he began to sink. And the most gracious words and the most gracious thing to Peter was that he started to sink. Jesus could have been an enabler and just have him walk, even though he started getting distracted. But no, but he, it left a message. That is, I honestly believe for disciples through this time, it would leave a mark on us as we remember and we go forward in our faith. What is that going to be for you? What is that going to be for you? Is it going to be, man, I've thrown off some things that were entangling me. And this was the sin that was really getting me covered and, and weighing me down. And I realized I don't need it as much as I thought. For me, is it going to be, man, do I really, really need sports that much? I realized I actually can survive without it. Mm -hmm. And not only survive, maybe thrive. What is it going to be for you? But the ultimate lesson could be when all this said and done, is that we keep and we kept our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith. And so this morning, as we go about our day, here's my encouragement to you. When temptation of panic and fear and anxiety come in and creep in and worry, keep our eyes on the one who reached out his hands and pulled us up. And we said, God, I need you. And for that fact, we will be heavily reliant on him. One of the most gracious acts that Paul received in his life was when he prayed and God would not take away the thorn in his side. And he said, I learned the power of God through my weakness. It's how God works. It's how he works. It's his method. He uses things, challenging things, to teach us so much about life and what really is important, what to declutter ourselves from. There's a cleansing going on in the world. And what I mean by cleansing, I'm talking we have become so focused and hustle and bustle and got slow down, people. Stay in your home. You don't need to go that fast. Mm -hmm. 